The new Galaxy Z Flip 7 got a major revamp in terms of its design. We now have a wider screen with a thinner body, a much upgraded on the cover display, and most importantly, a bigger battery capacity too. But are those enough to bring excitement back to Samsung's flip phones? And is it let down by the Exynos 2500 chipset? Let's talk about all of them in today's technical review of the Galaxy Z Flip 7. Many parts of this review will be the same or reference from the Galaxy Z Fold 7's review, so you can check out that review for more context at the top right corner there. Now, let's talk about the design first. The Galaxy Z Flip 7 has a bit of a readjustment to the size while being thinner at the same time. It's not a huge change on paper or when I put it beside the Z Flip 6, but as someone who have reviewed the previous generations of the Z Flip since the beginning, I can immediately notice that they are actually quite huge of a difference because you can feel it in your hands. I've seen many people saying that putting a case on a thin phone will make it thick again, and I disagree. Putting a case on a slim phone will make it feel like a typical phone when it is caseless. I do have to highlight that the fingerprint scanner, which doubles as the power button, is also as thin as the Z Fold 7s. That makes scanning the fingerprint a little difficult as the surface area available for the scanner to scan our fingerprint is also smaller. So do remember to move your finger as much as possible to get the most coverage possible while registering it. The corner curves also seem to have a smaller radius which make it look a bit more like the Z Fold 6 and 7 although not as aggressive. The screens are where things get interesting. Let's talk about the unfolded big display first. It has a tweaked resolution of 2520 by 1080 pixels at a larger 6.9 inch. Since it is a Dynamic AMOLED 2X panel, it can also go up to 120Hz refresh rate. Just like what we did for the Z Fold 7, we are doing two tests for the screen here, one for the top half and then another one for the bottom half. This display here is rather great as it can reach 1365 nits max auto brightness at the bottom portion and 1378 nits for the top portion. A bit of a discrepancy here is fine as it happens on every device. With its default out of the box settings, the screen is set to vividness level 1. From our test, the Z Flip 7 can achieve around 100% of sRGB and around 89% and around 89% of DCI-P3 color gamut coverage for both the top and bottom portions. They are within a very small variance range. We also redid all of the tests with Vividness Level 3 and both portions cover practically 100% of both sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamuts and that is to be expected from a Samsung device using the Dynamic AMOLED 2X screen. The higher DCI-P3 color gamut coverage here means uh, more vivid colors on your screen and Samsung introduced this slider since the S24 series. So we can choose how vivid we want the screen to be. Personally, I'm using it on vividness level 1 as anything higher just kind of strains my eyes. So you have your choice to, you know, make it work the best for your eyes. But let's talk about the size again. The Z Flip 7 is a bit wider than before and that means Samsung also tweak the aspect ratio for the unfolded display as well. This phone resolution actually matches the Z Fold 7's cover display at 2520 at 1080 pixels, which means they are both at the ever fantastic aspect ratio of 21 by 9. Many movies are produced using this aspect ratio and that is why it is also called the cinematic 21 by 9. Watching YouTube videos will most probably have black bars on the sides as YouTube videos are typically in the standard 16x9 aspect ratio and that is not a huge deal. Now let's also talk about the crease. It's basically the same situation as the Z Fold 7 as it also is using the new Armor Flex hinge to bend the phone's display. And the display now curves into a water droplet shape when it is closed. The display in itself is also strengthened by a grid 4 titanium lattice underneath and also has a thicker ultra thin glass at the top too with new glue for better adhesion and whatnot. I'll just repeat everything that I said about the Z Fold 7 here since they are the same. Creases will be on all foldable devices but the question is will it hold up against the test of time and is it distracting enough to be seen every single time? Since this device is still brand new, the crease is definitely flat and not really noticeable, though over time the crease might get deeper. 
As of now, I can say for certain that the crease feels much better compared to what we had before. It's very shallow and I can't feel any weird humps when I brush my finger across it, which is something that will definitely constantly happen when I'm doom scrolling social media for example. We'll revisit this if we can because this Z Flip 7 is not mine. The new flex armor hinge in the Z Flip 7 also behaves the same as the Z Fold 7 too. What I mean by this is that it actually has two stages of stiffness but to a lesser degree, as in the angle degrees. Opening up the initial few degrees is easy and then the hinge becomes stiffer. This is because if we want to use it in flex mode then the Z Flip 7 can stand on its own without the top half just flopping around. By the way, since the Z Flip 7 isn't as crazily thin as the Z Fold 7, it's much easier to grab just a part of the frame and then open it up. But once we close the phone, this is where we can find one of the biggest upgrades. The new Z Flip 7 has a cover display that is bigger thanks to the ultra slim bezels and also the screen wraps around the whole camera module. It is now a 4.1 inch display using the Super AMOLED panel, has a resolution of 940 by 1048 pixels and also goes up to 120Hz refresh rate. That is a huge upgrade because the animations are now very fluid and much more smoother to navigate around. Because of the multi-star module from GoodLock, we can practically launch whatever apps we want on the cover display. So we can test out the brightness and color accuracy too. From our test, it can reach 1388 nits in auto brightness mode and also has the same color gamut coverage percentages as the inner display for both vividness level 1 and level 3. Oh yeah, I should mention that if we set the vividness to level 3 in the settings menu, then the cover display will match that setting as well. Overall, I think this is an amazing upgrade and a necessary one over the previous generation Z Flip 6. I think it is also time to talk about the software and features available. The new cover display on the Z Flip 7 makes the entire display look amazing. There are a few more interactive wallpapers that we can put on the cover display and we even have a new adaptive clock that adapts around the subjects of the image too. If we can fit everything in the cover display that is. Other than that, the new features here are pretty much the same as the Galaxy Watch 8 series. Just like before, the tiles available on Samsung smartwatches are quote unquote ported over to the cover display of the Z Flip 7. I mean, the interface and screen size are obviously different, but functionally, they are the same. We do have Google Gemini that works directly on the cover display, which I think is neat. Just hold the power button and then we can start talking to it. Now Brief and Now Bar are also part of the cover display now, and the interface is also adapted to the cover display as well. For those who like to quickly view text, then the cover display is actually doing an amazing job here. I personally use swipe typing most of the time and it's perfect for this scenario. However, it's stuck to Samsung keyboard and we cannot change it to something else like my favorite Gboard unless we forcefully disable Samsung's keyboard via ADB. Yes, I'm aware of that trick too and um, I wanted to do that but most people will not. While swipe typing on the cover display though, I also realized that I keep hitting the camera bump way too many times. So let's talk about the cameras right now. The cameras on the Galaxy Z Flip 7 are basically the same as what we had previously. Nothing has changed other than the software and also the inclusion of the new Pro Visual Engine and also the chipset's ISP. While it doesn't sound good on paper, it's actually quite good in practice. Both the main and ultrawide angle cameras have amazing clarity and colors in all scenarios, be it indoors, outdoors, or anywhere. Most importantly, even night shots look good too. I thought the ultrawide angle camera would suck, but no, it's actually good. Though I really wish that the ultrawide angle camera has autofocusing, but we don't. All in all, still amazingly good cameras, especially to take selfies with. I mean, the UI certainly is weird by default because it's using some weird aspect ratio as the camera sensor is cropped and we have to manually change it to 4x3. Small matter because using these two main cameras to take selfies is much better than the unfolded displays selfie camera. What about videos then? Well, Samsung keep telling us to hold the phone this way in kind of like a camcorder pose. We can record up to 4K 60fps with the main camera and the video looks good with the colors and clarity despite being pitch black in certain areas, though the stabilization is really not the best. 
I tried holding the phone with one hand or both my hands and the result is basically the same. Yeah, construction. Now let's talk about the performance. The Exynos 2500 will perform basically without any hitch on all scenarios. Everything works well as there were no hitches or lags or anything like that and it's just buttery smooth and no complaints overall. Except when you are playing certain games on the Z Flip 7. There's actually a few things that you need to take note of. Number one, when a new chipset is announced, it will take time for game developers to go, oh, there's a new chipset and we need to do something to ensure our games work properly on that chipset. Since the Exynos 2500 is literally brand new as this is the first phone to use that chipset, games are not going to perform well on it. Number two, flip phones are just not meant for gaming. The chipset inside is sandwiched between two screens alongside all of the other components, hindering the ability to dissipate heat. There is also no proper way to put a cooling system inside since there's literally not enough space to do so. You might say maybe Samsung could have used a better chipset and tuned it like the way they did for the Z Fold 7, but I disagree. The total surface area available on these two devices is just way too different and the components sandwiched inside the Z Flip 7 is just not in its favor. And the Z Fold 7 does not have two screens sandwiched on the chipset. Anyway, the gaming performance is actually quite decent overall, barring the aggressive shader caching. I need to explain what shader caching is again, and it's basically a way to learn how to do it the first time, and then reuse what it has learned to do the same thing again and again, but of course much smoother and better and also more efficient. It's basically done on all modern games nowadays. For the Exynos 2500 in the Z Flip 7, it's just way too aggressive as every tiny action performed in the game will stutter a bit, sometimes a lot, just to cache the shader. I mean, the more we play the game, the smoother it will become. However, some games like Wuthering Waves, which is an open world action game with a lot of enemies and characters, it's basically impossible to cache all of the shaders. Will this be fixed in the future update? I'm sure it can. I'm not sure if I'll have the privilege to retest the gaming performance though because this phone is not mine. Now let's talk about the battery life. We have to run MacroDroid in the background to keep touching the screen as there was an issue with PC Mark's battery life test getting stuck there. I'm not sure if this is caused by Android 16 or One UI 8 but this is an issue that we have to solve right now. I'm not sure how running MacroDroid in the background will affect the overall battery life, but the upgraded 4300mAh battery lasts around 14 hours and 6 minutes in our standardized battery life test. That is great news as I thought having a bigger display would negatively impact the battery life, but we actually got an upgrade compared to the Flip 6. Now, let's not forget that MacroDroid was also running in the background during the test. What's not upgraded though is the charging speed. It is the same as before, only 25 watts maximum. One big change is that Samsung will now turn on the battery protection feature at the basic level by default. It took around 85 minutes to charge from 15% to completion, which is about the same as what we had before. When we redid the charging test with the battery protection turned off, we can get around 5 minutes faster to charge from 15% to completion. Not a huge difference and I personally would just leave it in its default settings. Another big upgrade that the Z Flip 7 has is Samsung DeX. That's why I'm doing a special segment here because for the past 5 generations, we did not have DeX on the Z Flip series. I'm just glad that Samsung brought this feature here as it adds more utility to the Z Flip 7, making it an even better productivity workhorse alongside with its many other features like Samsung Pay with its ability to add NFC access cards right now. And a few more things to mention here, the Galaxy Z Flip 7 comes with a USB 3.0 port at the bottom and it is indeed very fast to transfer all of the files and also supports display output via Samsung DeX too. An amazing upgrade over the Z Flip 6, honestly. And it only has a single SIM card slot. The speakers on the Z Flip 7 also sounds good. I mean, the phone isn't exactly as thin as the Z Fold 7, but I would expect the speakers here to sound at least on par or better than the Z Fold 7.
The question becomes, should you buy the Z Flip 7? It's an easy answer, yes. If you are already a fan of flip phones but held off last year, then this is literally the best time to get it. There are lots of upgrades across the board and this Z Flip 7 is amazing through and through. Slightly wider form factor with an aspect ratio of 21 by 9 for the unfolded display, upgraded cover display with 120Hz refresh rate, tinier bezels and flows around the camera cutout, and also upgraded battery life. Let's not forget that One UI is an amazing skin that brings forth many useful features that I personally appreciate a lot. The gaming performance is a bit weird due to the aggressive shader caching and there is just zero optimizations from any game developers at the time of this recording. But then again, if you are a mobile gamer, flip phones are not for you anyway. <laughs> so let me know what you think about the Galaxy Z Flip 7. Will you buy it or will you not? Leave all of your thoughts down in the comment section below and we'll see you guys in the next video. Yay! If you can hear construction noises, yeah, I apologize. I also don't want them to do construction, but 